world? What up, world? What up, world? Back again. It is the Country Rare Report. It's your boy Vic XL. One time for all my people who served our country. Oh, it's your dude, Spank. Same here. All right, man. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Another edition of the Country Rare Report. One time for all our first time viewers and our last time viewers, man. We truly, truly appreciate you guys. Y'all, please subscribe to the channel. Get in those comments. Hit that notification button that way you know whenever we drop. All right. Let's get into it, man. First video up because, you know, we got videos and music to talk about. First video up today is a gentleman who goes by the name of Young Rev, all right. This is somebody who um dropped a video off in the Facebook page, or they 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 sent a video. We have so many different ways of you sending us videos. This is a video that got sent to us. Um, I can't remember where, 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 but first up is Mr. Young Rev, and the name of this joint is Along the Road. Okay, let me start off by saying. This video, this video, um, no, let me start off with the lyrics. Let me start I can't off. can't find it. Oh, there it is. There it is right there. All right. I really, really like the subject matter and what Young Rev is talking about. Um, he's definitely going through some personal struggles and, and, and probably dealing with some everyday issues that a lot of us deal with in the lyrics. The part about the lyrics that I didn't like I felt like it was either spoken word or he was reading it off the paper. He didn't make me feel, I didn't hear that confidence when I heard that delivery. So it made me feel Confidence like, is a good word. Okay, that might have been, that was the word I was trying to find. Good word, good word. I, I didn't, either I didn't feel the confidence or I didn't feel like he had learned the lyrics. And maybe I'm wrong about both. Maybe that's his delivery. Maybe he's new to the game. So maybe the delivery isn't quite there yet. But I like the subject matter, what he was talking about, is just the delivery kind of made me like, uh, I don't know, bro. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm with you mentally, but I'm not with you when it comes to the actual delivery of it. Now, my man can sing a little bit, but it feels like when he came in with the singing, it don't feel like it was time for the hook. It feels like he just gave us an odd number of bars and then start singing. You know, yeah, this this was this is difficult for me. Um, I think he got talent, but I think this one this is an acoustic version, so yeah. there really isn't a beat. So trying to catch a beat when you're writing, when there is no beat, uh, and you you got an acoustic, you got a little banjo or or, or uh, an acoustic guitar that you're playing, that kind of throws it off, and then when you throw in your singing, and the singing ain't great. I'm just gonna throw that out there. It's, it's okay, but it ain't great. This was real rough. This was like, this is more of a demo for me. And, and I couldn't take it serious from what I saw because of course he took it serious because he shot a video for it, but I, I didn't think this song was professional quality. Nor did I think the video was pro professional quality. I just thought it was just, Hey, I'm gonna try it and see what see what I can get. Maybe throw it out there, see if it sticks. And if people like it, so be it. If they don't, I'm just conveying a message. I, I do think he has skills. He has a look, so he can work with that. Um, I I I just I wasn't vibing with it. The the his delivery was. I just don't think he should have been doing this tempo. This tempo was not his thing. It did not. Um, com it did not convey his talent the way that he probably should have. Maybe it was sped up a little bit more and throw a beat in there, or at least some sort of a, a lick, or maybe a, a a snare, just something. Just just don't go acapella with the uh, acoustics. That that was really really rough, and it was amateurish. And I don't want anybody to think that you know if this is their definition of country rap and they saw this video first and ever. Um, this would be a bad representation for the genre, and I and I'm, I, and I always say that for every video that we watch, if someone watched you, this video for the very first time, and this was the example that they know of for country rap, what would they see? And this would be a bad depiction of the genre. 
So I think he probably needs to like practice a little more, get some better production. Definitely not don't do the acapella and maybe, you know, practice on the singing, harmonize a little better. Definitely try to layer your tracks if you want to do acapella. Like it, this was just rough for me. You know what? I think maybe the lack of beat, maybe the lack of beat, maybe, maybe that threw it off. Maybe that has something to do with the delivery and the cadence. I don't know. I don't know because it is it is um, acoustic, and yeah. I don't, I'm not mad at him for attempting the acoustic style. For some reason, it just didn't go with this particular, maybe this flow or this song, maybe. I don't, I don't it's, know. It's definitely the tempo. It's definitely the tempo. But, like I said, I ain't mad at the content because I really enjoyed the content. I really enjoyed the content. I, I can't say that I got to the, into the content, to be honest. I was so thrown off by the production and the singing that it, I, I was deterred. Hopefully he come back and try something else. You know, this was only in, it debuted in May, uh, late May. So he's got plenty of time. All right, now I can't say this in shots out to me. Let me hang this up. Shouts out to my man, Young Rev. Um, definitely keep grinding, keep doing your thing. Uh, Young Rev, y'all can follow him at Young Rev underscore official over on Instagram. And he just dropped a brand new project. And the project is called Back Road Sermons. And uh, my man is doing actual physical copies, man. One time for anybody who's still doing physical copies. I need to hit him up and see if, um, you know, about getting a, getting, getting a joint from him. Wow. Okay. So, again, man. You know, and I, that's something I think I'm going to start adding, especially a lot of the independent artists. I'm going to throw out their social media info. That way, if people want to check them out, they can. You know, we are we, cool. drop, we drop the video links in in our descriptions of the videos, but I also think I'm going to start letting people know how to find these people when it comes to social media. That way, if they're interested, we're going to do everything we can to help promote these artists and get them to the next level. All right? That's fair. Next up. I'm sure they appreciate that. I hope so. I hope so. Next up is a guy who I really love this guy's flow. I love his persona. But but who are we talking about? I feel like <laughs> next up is my guy TJ Freak. And the okay, name, of this, okay. name of this joint is Doula Man and it features White Owl Official. Alright. Now, what I was about to say is TJ Freak is um, we reviewed quite a few songs with TJ Freak featured on. We've only reviewed one song that he was a lead artist, um, and that was um, Rumbling. Okay. But, but we reviewed, the Booty we, Shake record. Yeah, but we reviewed like two or three other records that he featured on that he killed, that he killed. Um, and this one goes in that same lane. TJ Freak to me has most the most personality of anybody in country rap. TJ Freak also says he's not a country rapper. He's just a rapper from the country. So I don't even know if TJ Freak wants us to even talk about his music on this show. But guess what? We're talking about rappers from the country and country rappers. Anybody who embraces it, we got you. Um, this record, this record is a ode to drugs. Yes. And when the record first came on, I didn't really care. For it when it came on, because I didn't, it had like a rock influence that I really didn't really dig. But when the bars came in, I was really riding with TJ Freak, and I was really riding with White Isle Official. Matter of fact, White Isle Official gave me that old school uh, Three Six Mafia. Oh yeah, oh flow. yeah, for sure. Matter of fact, not the Three Six Mafia flow, but the Triple Six Mafia flow before they became Three Six Mafia. A lot of people don't know that they went through name transformation from 666 Mafia to Triple Six Mafia to the Grammy-winning 36 Mafia, and all that was because record labels didn't want that affiliation with the devil worship and all that. But that's a little hip-hop history for you. But yeah. going back to TJ Freak, man, bar for bar, TJ Freak is definitely a force to be reckoned with. He just, for whatever reason, when, I'm re when we're reviewing his solo records, none of them resonate with me. He resonates with me as an artist, but his songs that he's shooting videos to are not resonating with me. But I definitely know he has the talent to create a really, really big record. So is that a production thing? 
Um, or, maybe. Or, or record selection, like he's just picking the wrong beats. Maybe, maybe, maybe like this record, I hear rock influence, but I also hear what sounds like a banjo in the background. Um, the subject matter is in pocket. You know, he's definitely a, a, a weed smoker. He, you know, does different types of narcotics or pharmaceuticals. And, and I'm with it. It's just something about this beat that don't resonate with me. I even like the video, man. I don't know if they found the worst looking trailer they could find in America to shoot it in, but I'm with man, it. Might be somebody, there might be some magic career. I thought it was abandoned, to be honest. That's what it looked like. But on the inside, it don't really look abandoned. The mm. inside looks a little better than the outside. They got a uh, a recliner in the front yard, fam. I, I think this might be, if I don't know, it might be somebody's crib. This might be part of the country living that I'm not privy to. I'm okay with it though. Um, uh, it was, this video, I like the quality of the video. Uh, lighting was good. Uh, it's first time seeing T.J. Freak without a face painting. Um, yeah, face so we know what it looks like. In, I know he, there was parts in here where he yeah. didn't have it on. Yeah. Um, I, I I like White Owl. White Owl, I mean, you said Three Six Mafia. He he got a different type of tone. He got a higher tone, but he reminds me of T Rock. Uh, your guy T Rock. Uh, and I and I it's just some street shit, hard, like rough around the edges type shit. No, but it's it's still good quality. Like the the content is there. I hated the beat though. Uh, um, I had to listen to the lyrics and ignore the beat because I wasn't feeling the beat at all. Lyrically, like I said, man, TJ Freak is in pocket. And I definitely need to see more features from TJ Freak. And he has a, the ability to switch up his styles. Because we've heard styles from TJ Freak where he sounds like one of the lost members of Good Mob. We've heard right. styles that sounds like he's one of the members, one of the lost members of 3 Six Mafia. So he definitely can can play with his flow. Maybe that's why the name Freak. Maybe because he freaks the flow. But again, the two individual solo records are the two records where he was the lead artist. Um, I'm just not feeling the beats. And his videos, his videos are clean, always clean. It's just, he has, right. he just has knocked it out of the park when it comes to me, when it comes to the records he's shooting videos for. But he's knocked it out of the park when it comes to being an artist to me. Mm, I can't say that I agree. Like, I, I like everything that I'm seeing from him, but I, I, I he's staying consistent. That's all you can ask for in this genre because they don't have radio. It's not like they're pushing for radio play or pushing a single, quote unquote. They just stay consistent by throwing merch and music out there. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can. I agree with him at being a great artist, but I think it's hard to be over the top and surpass the other guys that are. I don't know. Let me take that back, too, because I, I think he can do it. I don't know. I think we're, we may just not be seeing him rise and get to the point to where he's able to compete both visually and um, lyrically with uh, Churches and Adams and et cetera, et cetera. Like, I, I, I'm just here for all of it. Whatever he can, whatever, whatever he drops, as long as he's got a video, or if he drops an album, I'm still for it. Like, I, I'm a fan. And, you know, no doubt, and definitely do it, we got to give, you know, because I like to talk about what the artist is doing. I got to give one time for my man, TJ Freak, because he's actually featured on the new Mud Digger 12, the compilation that Average Joe puts out on a uh, yearly basis. So TJ Freak is making moves, and he's on that compilation, which is a great look for my guy. He's not Average Joe, is it, though, right? No, TJ Freak is independent. Okay, okay. Just, just checking. I, I wasn't sure. Again, man, one time TJ Freak and like I really need me a TJ Freak t shirt. Like he's he's definitely TJ Freak is gonna be around. And just because the songs are not resonating with me, it doesn't mean it's not resonating with his fan base because they are. You know, because people are rocking with him. I right, well I'm definitely rocking with him. Like I I'm lyrically he's up there. He's definitely in my top ten. And it definitely makes me want to hear more from White Owl official. So, it, it, you know what would be dope if White Owl and CJ and Shamu made a group? That shit would be ignorant. Now, that would be know, like, yeah, that would be dope. That would be dope as fuck. 
Now you do know that TJ is in a group with Samra. No, I didn't know that. What's yeah, the name he, of the group? TJ freaking Samra. Oh, that that's a that ain't a group group. Is that a, is it a real group or is it like a compilation one album whenever they want to put the, put together some shit? Um, it's not compilation. Um, basically, if you go to he he advertises his group page, Sam Rock and TJ Freak. So. Hmm. They got a project um, called Mud Holes and Weirdos, so they're definitely, they're definitely, uh, um, you know. Well, as long as they stay consistent, just put their product out. That's all we ask. And once I throw it all out there, they use the hashtag Country Rap Tune, so I definitely ain't mad at them on that. <laughs> so, again, man, make sure y'all check out my man TJ Freak on that. Um, Mud Diggers 12, Average Joe Compilation. That's a good look for TJ Free. That's definitely You're going to throw out his IG? I don't, I, do I need to pull it up? No, I got That's, it. You just, you just hit all of that on me, so I don't, I don't... I'm trying to read my notes, get out of Skype, and watch the videos again. Just make sure I don't forget something. All right, now, TJ Freak. Y'all can follow him at TJ Freak, and that's TJ F-R-E-E-Q. And I just seen some. I'm not sure if this is true, but if it is, I'm gonna I'm gonna inbox him and find out. I think he might be from Manchester, Georgia. Damn. My brother used to live up there. He's ride bikes up there. That's I dope. Know. Um, he mentions Manchester, Georgia. So I don't know if um hey man. I mean it ain't it ain't but so big, you know. You blink and you through the town. But it's nice. It's nice, quaint, off to the side. Got a little ice cream parlor, like that type of shit. That type of old time vibe. Really? Yeah. I think you like it. It's kind of like, like Barnesville. Okay. It, it, it pushes you there like that. It's, it's like Barnesville. Now that's funny because, and that's, I mean, being from a small town and having that originality and that style he has, that's even doper. Yeah. Because he's You know, he was a wrestling fan. He probably I told was you like he looks like one of the Hardy Boys. <laughs> He looks like Matt or Jeff Hardy in their um, golden era when they first came into WWE. He, I, if we ever interview him, that's going to be one of the first things I ask him. Like, what's his, um, what's his influence or what's the imp wrestling influence? Because also, him and Sam Rock carry around the belts. So, right, right. So he, he, he probably got had um, up in Manchester. They probably had them, some independent wrestlers come through every weekend at the VFW. You know, you know how we did in Griffin. Just come, come check it out. Or at the at the, at the local car dealership, because you know how they used to, they set up the ring at the local car dealership too. Bro, I ain't know nothing about it. Really? <laughs> no, damn, that's hot as fuck outside in the summertime, or oh, maybe yeah. spring. Um, in Griffin, at the at Spalding Ford, shop in Spalding Ford. Um, I bought a car from there from there years years ago. Um, when it was owned by Mr. Allen Rees, just some plugs, just for, for the hometown. Um, but <laughs> about twice a year, they would set up the ring and do a big wrestling event in the middle of the car lot. Wow. Just a way to, it would be a free event, just a way to get people to come up, watch wrestling, and hopefully they'll look around and possibly buy a car. And it would be, cool, in, be independent wrestlers, but the funny thing about wrestling, for all my wrestling fans out there, and I often would like I've 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 I want to find somebody to talk wrestling with on on camera, but anyway, um, because I still watch it. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> a lot of the wrestlers that you would see there, you know, maybe a year or two later, it was like a breeding ground, breeding ground. So maybe within a year, two years, three years, you would see those wrestlers on television. They would make it up. It was like a minor league. But yeah, that's what's up. Uh, you know, it might be sponsored by the car lot and the local sheriff's department or the car lot and the booster club. They would take donations. But, yeah, man, at, at, at Spalding Four, One time for old school Spalding Four and Allen Reeves, when Allen Reeves was running that joint. Um, yeah, man, they used to bring wrestling to the city. Yeah, and it would be hot as hell. <laughs> I'm sure it would be. <laughs> but, you, know, my, you know, my granddad would always take me up there. You know, they would have seats around the ring. So it would be like you were at a wrestling event. You would just be right. in the middle of the goddamn car lot. So you might be watching somebody get rammed into the turnbuckle um, while you're sitting behind a Ford Ranger or while a Ford Ranger might be directly behind you. But it was real cool for the community, man. 
And we need more community type events like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, man. Next up, next up, next up, let's keep the party going. It's my guy. And this guy is definitely, 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 definitely staying busy. Anthony Beastmo. And the name of this joint is hot. You want to start it off? I'm not. I'm, yeah, because you could, you, you'll you probably come with some positives because I got negatives. First Woo! of all, Drake did, Drake did the video, and I love that Drake did the video. Great Shot cinematography in the video. Shot yeah, by Drake great McGuire. For those who yeah. don't know, Drake McGuire. Um, great, great lighting. Great, great camera angles. I love all of that stuff. Okay, that's the positive. The negative. I don't know who's picking his beat, but he need to fire them. Like, this shit is Travis Porter-ish, like Roscoe Dash-ish. And I, I vividly remember us saying the same shit the last time we reviewed a record from him. Like, bro, what? Are you just recycling the content and having picked up to the more modern stuff? Or is this, like, who you are? You're just trying to be that guy for the genre? Or is this your vibe? Like, late two, late 1990s, early 2000s-ish? Like, I'm speaking of vibe, that's who did most of these beat, beats. Like, come on, I don't, I don't, and he's got talent. He's got the look, like he could do a lot more, but everything that I'm seeing, it just feels like it's dated. And I don't like that for country rap because it's already got a bad, bad stigma about it being, you know, not full of content or the content is a little bit subpar. Like here, we, we're playing this record and you play this and any Travis Porter record that when they were in their heyday or Roscoe Dash, or FLY, like this beat is that type of beat from that generation. Like this, this is not what I was expecting when I hear Anthony B. Smode's lyrics. Like lyrically, he can, he can flow. He got the cadence, he got the delivery, but his beat selection is just bad. Like, and I, and I can't even say it in a positive way. And I'm trying to spin it as best as I can, but these beats, fam, this, this is not the business. I'm sorry. Done? I'm done. I adamantly disagree with you on this record. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, I think, first of all, I think Anthony Beastmo has two sides. And I'm going to say Anthony Beastmo is at his best when he's double timing and being aggressive. Because okay. the, the now, record, we have when do we hear that though? The the records we we review several records by Anthony Beast Mode. The okay. ones that we've showed more favor have been the ones he's been aggressive on. Okay, okay. That's so fair. I think I think and it wouldn't shock me if we found out that when he initially entered the genre, that's what he gave people. Now why and, go back to it? Huh? Why, why would he go back to it then? No, I mean, I think now he does both. I think Anthony Beast Mode is trying to grow his fan base. And I think he knows if he stays in that same pocket, his fan base won't grow. It'll just stay there. So I'm not mad at Anthony Beast Mode for these type of records. I, now, the one thing I do agree with what you said is that beat definitely, definitely sounds like a recycle. And I'm going to think, and I'm going to think of it's going to be off air, but that record sounds just like a record by a gentleman. Um, Oh my God, I can't remember, but he was signed to 300 Records a while ago. Salim signed him. Um, man, I'm going to think of it when we're not recording. But Yola? Not Yola. No, it's not Yola. 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 All right, man. So it didn't remind me of uh, DG Yola. But it reminded me of an artist. Um, the artist I'm referring to, his name is Spinzo. I think he was from South. I think he was from St. Louis. He had a song seven years ago called "Wiper." Uh, the beat kind of made me think of that, but slowed down. And even the subject matter kind of made me think of that. But let me say this: I'm not mad at this record at all, and I'm not mad at um, Anthony Beast Mode being in this lane because Anthony Beast Mode definitely, definitely has a sex appeal for the ladies. And he's creating a lane in country rap that maybe a lot of artists might be afraid of. 
So with that being said, I'm not mad at him for going for the ladies, taking the shirt off, wearing the tight shirts, keeping his physique up to par, and going after that fan base. And every time he does these videos, he always has a different, a different, nice, on the eyes looking lady. And um, he's definitely shooting for what I would say a mainstream appeal when it comes to these type of records and this type of look. Man, the video is clean. Drake definitely did his job on the video. Um, it's intimate because it's just the female and Anthony. And um, I ain't got nothing bad to say. I understand where you're coming from because it does sound like that era. Travis Porter. Right. Like I said, it reminds me of anybody who want to reference checkers. It reminds me of Spinzo. He had a song called Wiper seven years ago. Um, get on your YouTube. Get on these YouTube streets. Look up Spinzo Wiper. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see where the, the, the comparison could be there because the beat kind of sounds the same. It wouldn't shock me if the same person did the beat. Then no, that would be a tragedy. Because it's twenty it's twenty twenty one, fam. Like this, these beats aren't even good right now. Like nobody's using them. Like this is this is definitely a throwback to nineties babies era. Like if you if you want that vibe, fine, but I don't see it having a place in country rap. And this this is a repeat. Like one time is okay. Second, like fam, this is two records of this same era. This thing, and it didn't. It that phased out. It phased out for a reason because it was just, you know, we're not there anymore. As a culture, you know, you can vibe and you can have parties and all that other shit. But you, I mean, Dusty Lee made party records, so they don't sound nothing like this. But this could be part of him creating his own lane. Bro, this this is a lane that has been done, and it's a it's a lane that probably shouldn't be done again. Like if you, I mean, the the beats are plentiful though. Like you, vibe still got his sound click. You can get all kinds of beats from that generation. I just don't think it suits him. If he wants to make chick records, he can make chick records without not do this type of beat. If you want to make party records, then fine. Make those type of beats that are not dated and bring it to twenty twenty one. At least 2020, like it could come around in there, but this is not a good representation of him. And I'm I'm disappointed because I I hear the talent and I, and I know that he got it in him, but just the production is not great. The production is holding him back. I think and the Beast Mode is a star, and just like he, we, he has the potential to be a star. Yes, we say this a lot on this show. A lot of these artists have star potential, and it seems like. Look, they have the visual, they have the talent, and maybe what's lacking behind right now in country rap is the production. Maybe. Maybe the production, but maybe it, but do you could you blame that on the lack of radio? Um radio that, usually sets the trend, yes. So it, it could be part of it. But at the same time, well all right, if, you, if you don't have a Okay, go ahead. Not, not to cut you off. Um, it's all good. And it's going back to what I just said. So say, for instance, radio sets the trend. Now, right. even though a lot of artists don't want to follow the trend, a lot of times you'll find yourself getting in that pocket because if the trend is going this way and you're trying to move with where the trend is going, you'll find yourself emulating a sound or emulating a kick or snare or whatever the case may be. Like, But even at that, just to, not to cut you off, but as an artist, because I used to be a rapper, as an artist, when you when the trend has been set and, and over here because there is no radio, then you're going, you're, the trendsetters are the guys that are doing it already, the church, uh, Cahoon, Struggle, and then you find yourself emulating them because radio is not dictating who or what the current sound needs to be. Now, those guys are pissed because they thinking people are stealing or jacking their style or biting them, but that's not the case because you guys are the trendsetters. They're just emulating what you're doing to try to define who they are. And it's, it's more of a, a, a respect thing than it is a diss or, or, or any negative condensation. I, I think Anthony Beastmo, if he, I think he would probably be better doing, who would I, how would I, I would, what pocket would I put it? If he's going to be the ladies dude and he want to be the LL Cool J of country rap, then he needs to be having those type of beats. He needs to be having that type of flavor. The visuals are there. It, um, he, he, 
he's got the talent to be able to do it, and he can bounce back and forth because LL did it. LL make a chick record and come right back and do this and then come right back and do some party shit, like all of that. But if he's going to do party, it cannot be beats from 2014 and before that, like the 1999 to 2014-15 era. You can't do that, fam. That's, that's not a good representation. Well, that, look, and that is Don't a great. That. that is a great. <laughs> that is a great. That's a great comparison. I think Anthony Beastmo is going for the LL Cool. You know how we call Austin Tyler with the Nelly of country rap. Right. right Anthony right. Beastmo has the potential to be the LL Cool J of country rap. He has that potential, but I agree with you. But I also feel like, are we listening to it from a hip hop perspective when we're talking about trends and and things? Absolutely, like that? absolutely. Is that fair for country rap? It's country first, but rap second. So it fair to fair or not, they still got their foundation from hip hop. Like the fundamentals still have to be there. Like we got on the other group the other day in in, in our podcast when. A guy didn't rhyme not one time, but he had the cadence, he had the emphasis, like he had the, the, the body language, but not one rhyme. Like that is the essential to rapping, you know. But again, that might be his flow if you want to do that. But this is there's certain elements that you have to hold true in hip hop. And because this is country hip hop or country rap or hiccup or whatever you want to call it, like all of that shit translate over to here. That no matter how hard you try to make it into something completely different or something new, the fundamentals still have to be there. You 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 have to rhyme. You have to rhyme in your raps. Basic shit. Your beats, you have to stay on beat, have a decent cadence like that. If you're gonna do certain imagery with your stuff and it has to has to cor- correlate with the with the lyrics. Like uh, this is all basic shit. I would it's this stuff we shouldn't have to be teaching because most of these guys that we are talking about on this uh podcast these guys already know. They define who they are, or they're they're they've already developed their style, and now they're just trying to fine tune it. I don't know what what Anthony B. Smoke represents, but because of the styles that we've seen, if you want to go hard and doing that shit, then I'm fine with that all day. You can stay that way. But if you're going to be the ladies' guy, then it's the production that sets him back when he's doing that type of shit. Because it's not good, fam. And they're not so much the production isn't good because the mixing and mastering is still somewhat okay in the records it's just that the beats are dated and the dated will definitely turn people off but to the average country rap listener do you think it'll turn them off because you're are you speaking from a hip-hop perspective Mm -hmm. because you we just mentioned the seven years ago so that was 2015 era right 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 but to the average country rap fan who's not abreast of hip-hop that might be current to them. It might be. And when you go to these mud spots, they are playing music from that generation. Right. But, but, that don't mean that you need to be making raps with those same type of beats. And based on the comments, I'm completely wrong because they feeling it. They love the song. They love the vibe. I just feel like, are, are, do they love the vibe because they haven't heard a wide selection? Uh, because it's the, the, the pocket is so small with country rap and there's only a few people that are actually doing it right. And when he's making this beat from 2014, they don't know any, they don't know any better. So they're like, oh, I, I like it. Run with it. Or, and, and again, I'm going to use him as an example the same way we did one of the other guys earlier in the same podcast. If this song was played to somebody as a, as a defining moment for country rap, I still think you would get the same um, validation that I'm giving right now. It sounds dated. Like if somebody in hip hop heard this, they're gonna be like, "Bro, this when you when was this done? 2014, 2015?" Because you know, because of the beat. This goes along with those type of folks. But if somebody in country hears it, they're like, "Okay, I, I'm vibing to it. I, I like it." Or somebody outside of hip hop, you know, they're gonna get the same. Uh, repeat ex- uh, uh, reasoning on why they like it because they have not heard the, the stuff that is up to date. This is nothing like t- something that was done in 2021. 
this definitely sounds like music of that era. And I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying if this is going to be Anthony Beast work, Beast mode going forward, come forward with the production. Like, come to today with it. Because we need to hear beats from today. I do, for sure. I, again, like I said, I'm, I'm completely wrong because all of the damn comments on here is like just loving it, which is, I'm dumbfounded, but okay. If that's what y'all into, then I can dust some shit off from 20, 2013, 14, and, you know, sell some beats if y'all want them. I totally disagree with you because, again, you're looking at it from a hip hop perspective. And I understand right. I understand that. But the fan the the fan the listening fan, and that's not saying that the listening fan in country rap is behind the listening fan of hip hop. But what I'm saying is if country rap is an offspring of hip hop, then this type of thing happens. It happens in, in holy hip hop, it's happening in country rap. Like the sounds might not be current. And I blame that on the average person that's doing country rap might not know what's the trend. So to me, it's okay to revisit it. It's okay. You know what? It's okay if in country rap today that Travis Porter era is popping in the clubs. It's okay. And you know what? I think a lot of producers who maybe um, – was stuck on that sound. Um, what's the guy's name? I can't think of his name. Oh my God, K something on the track. K K something on the track. K K E on the track. Bro, I think K E on the track could make a lot of money in country rap right now. Like even to me, and and um um a, a while ago we spoke on Savannah Dexter's Country Girl and how it's getting rave reviews. Well, that's how I felt about Country Girl when I listened to the beat. It made me think of that 2015 era of hip hop. And obviously to the 2021 country rap fan, that's okay. And I'm okay with it. I'm not mad at Andy Beast Mode when he switches up, but I feel like he's more comfortable when he's in aggressive line. Mm, we're gonna have to agree to disagree on this one because I, I just can't let when that's when something sound dated, I can't I can't vibe to it. And if if it sounds different, I'm I'm fine with. But this definitely sounds like, I mean, are we saying that also now the producers are coming over to country rap to ex expand or hold on to their careers a little longer? Or I'm is this somebody okay. that was from that? that I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not, I can't agree, fam. I don't think it's okay. If, if I don't you, think it's okay. If you're known for a sound, if you're known for a sound, and a safe and K on the track, he's known for that Travis Porter that uh, Rich Kids, that J Money, that um, Young LA Sound. K on the track, that's when he flourished. We really, he hasn't really flourished since the era. Can you agree? Okay, I agree. Okay, so say for instance, for whatever reason, he can't get over the hump past that sound. That's his signature sound. What's wrong if, if artists like it, TJ Freak, um, Anthony Beastmo, what's wrong if these artists say, hey, bro, Cook us up some of the stuff you was cooking up back in the day. I don't think Mr. College Park. Imagine what Mr. College Park could do in country rap. But nobody's buying his beats in hip hop today. Um, I'm not a fan of that philosophy, fam. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, if that's if now we are saying that the fans over in country rap will settle for less or no. Because this is this is dated stuff. This is stuff that flourished in hip hop at one time, and now we just got to slide it on over in country rap because they'll accept it. First of all, the artist picked the record. We we would have to ask the artist why he picked the beat. He liked the beat. He he had a vision for the beat. You got to feel that. He shot a video to it. I don't. I, Do you I remember? On the, we're gonna go back. I, I, we're confused. I'm confused. Do you remember Go ahead. Ron DMC are traditionally known for a sound, right? Yeah. The rock remember, rap hybrid. Do you remember? No, that. Oh, my God. You're going to call them hybrid. I hate when people call them hybrid because of that one song. Yeah, it was a hybrid. It was a hybrid. They, most, they did a whole album of rock rap shit with Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin helped define their that sound, that rock rap shit. 
Okay, what I'm you gonna... calling it then if you ain't calling it a hybrid? Anyway, Run DMC is known for a sound. <laughs> right. I just hate Run DMC getting lumped. I, mean, I hate when people think Ryan Dempsey and the second thing in their mind is Aerosmith. I, I hate that. I hate that. Oh, no, 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 no. I It was well before. Well, it was around the same time, but they was already experimenting with some shit before the Aerosmith track came out. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Do you remember their last album? I think it was called Down With The King. I remember a couple songs of it. I don't, don't remember the whole album, but yeah. That album was so Naughty By Nature influenced that they actually had features with Naughty by Nature, and you could tell Tretch from Naughty by Nature was doing some ghostwriting. Okay. Hey, man, that was them trying to keep up with the times. And that probably okay. that probably pushed them on out the game for the most part, other than being legends. Okay? To me, okay. I don't see anything wrong with artists if they want, if you want to be in this pocket, if this is Anthony Beast Mode's pocket, and this is resonating with his fans, I ain't mad if it, if it's a vintage sound. I only want to call it vintage. It's just seven years ago. <laughs> That's uh, a decade in hip hop terms, especially in radio. Like There's three no years radio. is ancient. I'm saying in hip hop terms, three years is yesterday for hip hop. Like. The shit goes in three years. You used to do radio, so you well, you still do radio. You, you know how these cycles go. I'm I'm just saying, if he wants to do this sound, I think it would be a mistake. He could be better suited. He would sell more records if he was doing actual ballad type shit, like I Need Love or right. Uh, You're right. I agree with that. Like if he did those type of shit, then the the ladies would definitely gravitate towards him a little more, and he would sell more records. But this. This party stuff, like I just can't, I can't get into it. But again, I'm, I'm a minority in this because you agreeing with it, and so do the people that are in these comments. Like they, they're vibing to this. But I think if he came a little bit more current with the beats, and he was still doing the party shit, he would even be representing it a little better. That's all I'm saying. Like this, this type of beat and the last beat that we did on him, it's not good, fam. That's good. It's not good, fam. Okay. All right, man. Let's move on. Last okay. up for the day is oh, if y'all want to follow him, and it's so many people following him that you probably already are. But if you want and you're new to Anthony B. Smoke, you can follow him on Instagram at Anthony B. Smoke the Bar. Anthony B. Smoke the Bar. And that's oh, no, and I'm not dissing Anthony B. Smoke for, for anybody that's watching this or if he's watching this. This is not a diss. This is just my critique on uh, the, the way that I'm seeing his talent being utilized. I just, I think he could better utilize it over here in this little pocket instead of fucking with this pocket. Cause this pocket right here puts you in a box uh, that's already dated. All right. 27,000 followers on IG, man. Beast Mode is doing his numbers. Beast Mode is a LL Cool J. He could probably walk around with his shirt and get a thousand followers, you know, and they don't even know he rap. Actually, you know, and actually, I didn't know this about Anthony Beast Mode. Just a little fun Anthony Beast Mode fact. Um, his project, Rebel Family, peaked number seven, top USA rap hip hop album chart. Well, damn. At some when he released that album, was seven. it 2014? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so man, last up, last up, North Woods Outlaws. And the name of this joint is No Joke. Okay? Now, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. When I heard this record, this record said Victor Walker all day, every day. <laughs> this is that aggressive hit you in the mouth type of music I like. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at Northwood Outlaws. You know, I love groups. I love when people combine their talents and do their things. Um, I thought the video was cool. They didn't do a lot with the video. What I mean by that, they kind of shot it in one scene, but they gave us the aggression. They gave us the lyrics. The, and it basically let us know, like, 
Northwood Outlaws ain't to be fucked with. They ain't no joke. Got yeah, three the video's members. pretty the video was pretty basic. Um it was a basic rap out video. You know, cameraman, shoot, in and out, that's it. Nothing special. Like and I and I'm not mad at that. Like it is it served its purpose. And um these guys are from Maine, bro. Maine. Like yeah. I'm saying Maine, the state? Yeah. I thought you was gonna say the city in in down south somewhere. Like I, they could do country rap in Maine. The fuck? They are from Maine, Northwood Outlaws. I ain't mad at them, bro. I really, really like this song. I think more people need to get involved with the with the Northwood Outlaws movement. They don't really have a large following right now on social media. I don't know how long they've been together, but they're definitely, definitely putting in the work. For real. How do you feel about this record? I, the song structure was weird for me. Uh, again, this is my hip hop fundamentalist, but the first dude went twice. So it went one, one, two, three. If, if he was adamant on going twice, then it should have went one, two, three, one. And his second verse, which is probably the better verse of all four of them, or all four verses, the second verse should have been the last verse because he was spitting and doing some tongue twisting and shit in there. So that was dope. Um, it went again. You know how I am on wardrobe, you know. But this is this is probably a spur the moment type of video, so they probably shot this shit in like ten minutes and was done. Uh, and I I like the I like them. I like the styles. Um, I like now that you're telling me they're in Maine, and I didn't know you know anybody was rapping up there. But okay, that you got they got a they got a lane. Um, I think. I, I want to hear more from them. Like this is this is probably a good, re, this is a good representation of country rap. If somebody played this video, and this is your first time being introduced to country rap. You got three white dudes sitting around like they just got off work. One of them probably a mechanic. You know they got on Everlast shit. They got on the basic shit that you were wearing country rap. You know if if one of them had dip in their mouth, it, it would not surprise. Them. You know so this is a good depiction of what country rap is because and all three of them got got talent <clears throat> i'm 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 rocking them i would like to hear more hopefully they'll put some more music out because you know this just dropped early june so maybe maybe this is just the start of what we can expect from north woods outlaws that's a difficult name to say north woods outlaws nwo i'm a, that's what i'm gonna call them nwo hey i'm sure they got merch that says nwo that fits i hope so they need I to take so. the old, old wrestling NWO logo and rebrand it. If they don't get sued. Now, to me, what I really like <laughs> most, because I like groups, so the things I like about groups, number one, you always have a favorite. And you're right, that second verse was dope. But to me, right. lyrically, one none of, none of them was slacking, in my opinion. True. None of them was slacking lyrically. True. And they, they meshed well together. I can tell they've been together for a while. If not, then that chemistry is just natural and organic. Um, this would be one of those groups that I would love to see live, man, because it seems like they probably got a lot of energy. Yeah, and and when you look at either one of them, you would never guess they were rappers. No, like all of them look like you know they just chilling, just 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 nothing special. But dude in the red hood can spit. I know why he went twice because he's probably the better one of the three. But the song structure threw me off just a little bit, just a little bit. But I, I, next time, if you're going to go twice, fam, split your verse up. You go first and then last. All right. For those who want to keep up with the Northwood Outlaws on IG, definitely follow me. In, NWO. NWO. No, no, no NWO. <laughs> Northwoods <laughs> Outlaw Music. Northwoods Outlaws Music. Y'all got a lot of S's in there. North yeah. Woods Outlaws Woods, music. Outlaws music. Yeah, that's what that's what messed me up. I was like, eh, NWO fan. All them S's. No joke. All right, now before we get up out of here, man, it's something um I gotta find this. Cause I said I want to talk about. It. I I love talking about um you know when the genre is moving and stuff is going on. So I seen a post that I definitely, definitely 
wanted to mention and now it is no longer there. So I won't talk about it. But I will talk about this because I just ran across this. One time for my man, um, because we talk about him a lot. One time for Zilla Gorilla. You can catch him performing at the Tri-City Hip Hop Awards alongside TJ Freak and Shamu the Pimp on August the 28th in Columbus, Georgia. Okay. August the 20th. That's too far. I didn't even try to plan that one. We can probably make that show, though. Performing live at the Tri-City Hip Hop Awards, TJ Freak, Shamu the Panda, and Zilla Gorilla. Definitely, 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 definitely check that out. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually share see if this. We get, see if we can get media credentials. We we'll probably get all kind of interviews in, uh, that day. Yeah, we definitely could. I mean, definitely could. All right. So again, man, Country Rap Report. We just went over four songs and videos for you guys. Recap. We had Young Rev. And the one thing I didn't say about Young Rev, um, I can tell he's definitely doing his thing with what he got. Um, the video was kind of black to me. So, but I see his potential. And you know what, to me, I think someone like Young Rev would be, if Adam came in and scooped up Young Rev, because he looks a lot like a young Adam to me, that I could see his potential taking off. And I, like, I think a lot of rappers in the country rap genre, they're just lacking the proper producer to just work with them and build that chemistry. Well, well as see- long as the producer isn't from 2014, then that's fine. All uh, right, we also talked about TJ Freak's Duel of Man featuring White Isle Official. Um, again, TJ Freak is one of the guys who I think could take country rap to the next level. Um, it was the production for me on this song. It wasn't the right. delivery, it wasn't the video, it was the production. Andy Beast Mode, hot. For you, it was, it was the production. Right. Video right. was dope, it was the production. And last up, we had Northwood Outlaws, and to me, that was just a wrap out, but it was really, really cool, and it made me want to see those three guys take stage, and it makes me interested in hearing more about them. Y'all definitely, definitely stand up for Maine. For sure. You probably stand up for the whole Northeast, because I didn't know there was country rappers up there. All right, man. That's it for me in this episode. Um... I don't have any PSAs today. I'm I'm really discouraged on the level of I can't say that because these people might not think that it's lower level production. Y'all just keep putting out music. Put out music and put out videos with the music as a visual rep- representation. Just keep doing it. Regardless of what we say or how we feel, you, you know, there are fans out there for you. So as long as you keep putting it out, they will gravitate towards it. CountryRapReport.com. CountryRapReport.com. Yes. CountryRapReport.com. If you want to submit a video, you can go to CountryRapReport.com. Or you can check us out on the Facebook group or let us know. Send me send us the link on the Instagram page. But all things Country Rap Report. We ain't hard to find. Get in your Googles. All right? Till next time, man. When we see y'all on these YouTube streets. And if we see you on these streets, we're going to review it. Whether you want us to review it or not, it's going to get talked about. Yeah, that's the cool part. You can hate us all you want. You can block us all you want. <laughs> we're still going to talk about it. You know, We're going to still talk about your stuff, good, bad, or indifferent. And that's funny. If we review right. positive stuff of people who block us. Mm. It is what it is. All right, man. Till next time, your boy Big XL. It's your dude's fine. And to our first time and last time viewers, we love you guys. Peace.